Welcome friends to another video, welcome to a new list and this time around I'm going to talk about 10 fragrances that I consider to be overly hyped, overrated and uh, that are not worthy of your hard-earned money. Let's start with the first one, it comes from the house of Burberry and uh, this is a big letdown to me. It's not a bad fragrance by any means but uh, performance issues and uh, the quality isn't the best. Mr. Burberry and this considered that it's made by Francis Courjan, a big name in the fragrance world. So um, I don't really like this fragrance mainly because I get a lot of issues with performance. I have a lot of issues with uh, wearing this one. Um, it doesn't project, it doesn't uh, have good longevity. Sometimes it does have good longevity and good projection, um, but but overall this is a big disappointment and also all reviews out there are overly hyping this fragrance as being a really great one when in reality it isn't. Next one up on this list comes from the house of Tursardi. This is a big uh, disappointment to me mainly because it's a very uh, boring fragrance. I smell this uh, hundreds of times. This is Trussardi Womo the Red. What you get in this one? A lot of synthetic notes. You have cognac, you also have tonka. A lot of tonka. I was uh, really eager to add this one to my collection because I love boozy fragrances. Unfortunately, the tonka inside this one is too much. It's overpowering and uh, also you can smell the same type of fragrance in so many other creations from uh, so many other designer houses and also niche houses. Therefore, not worthy of your money, not worthy the hype. Next one up, and this is a uh, really very hyped fragrance by a lot of people on YouTube. This is from Banana Republic, 78 Vintage Green. So many compliments about uh, this fragrance, about how great it is, how good it smells, how good it performs, when in reality it's, um, what can I say, scented water would be the simplest way to describe this uh, so-called fragrance. Very generic, very poor composition, also very poor performance. I mainly bought this one, not because of the hype, because I never buy fragrances due to the hype that, uh, let's say, people uh, with uh, product placement as an uh, occupation do on YouTube, but mainly because it has fig inside. And I really love fig in my fragrances. Therefore, I was really interested in uh, purchasing this one, mainly because I love fig and it was a total letdown. I've seen a lot of reviews uh, calling this one one of the best fig-based fragrances on the market and so on and so forth. In reality, it isn't and it's not worth your money. Although this is quite cheap, still I wouldn't pay again the price for this one. Next one up comes from the house of Laura Biagiotti. It's so uh, boring and unsatisfying that although I have this fragrance uh, for almost one year in my collection, I haven't even bothered reviewing it. This is Roma Mor from Laura Biagiotti. Again, fig is another note in the composition. And just like the fragrance from Trussardi, you get a lot, but a lot of synthetic tonka in this one also. Furthermore, this one smells a lot to me with a uh, different fragrance from the house of Laura Biagiotti called Passione Uomo, the red bottle. And uh, it's quite boring to feel the same thing from the same house from uh, two different lines. Not worth the money, not worth the hype, huge disappointment also. Roma Mor from Laura Biagiotti. Next one up, a uh, fan favorite, if I could call uh, this one like that, from Calvin Klein comes CK1 Gold. Another dud, if you ask me. Poorly made, poor performance, poor composition, 
very synthetic, very generic, nothing but nothing manages to impress about this fragrance. Again, we have fig in this one also, but there, uh, there is uh, nowhere to be found. CK1 Gold. Let's go to the house of Isemiyake. And although this one isn't really a bad fragrance, still it feels very generic, very unoriginal and uh, boring at the same time. And this is L'Odyssée pour Rome Sport. And although the title suggests that this is a sport type of fragrance, in reality it isn't. You have leather inside, it's uh, the total opposite of a sporty fragrance. But it's generic, it's uh, unimpressive. Performance-wise, it's okay, but uh, projection-wise, it's quite uh, moderate. Actually, quite poor, to be uh, really honest with you. Therefore, although I have it in my collection for about two or three years, this is how much I've worn from this bottle. Very unimpressive, very, very disappointing. Let's move to the house of D squared. This is uh, the only fragrance that I still own from the older um, bottles that this uh, house made. This is D squared potion. Again, very disappointing. You have uh, cinnamon, you also have amber. Mainly, this is the main accord in this fragrance, but um, huge problems in terms of uh, performance. Sometimes it performs well other times it performs really really poor uh, also it's a blend that i've smelled too many times so it's quite boring it's quite unoriginal and uh, to be honest with you i wouldn't pay again the money that i paid for this fragrance i cannot say that i'm gonna miss not having this fragrance in my collection or that it was discontinued like all the older uh, products from the house of d squared Let's go to the next one, and the next one comes from the house of Lalique, one of my favorite houses. And this is a fragrance that a lot of people love, but I honestly am uh, quite uh, unimpressed uh, with the quality of the juice, with the scent profile, and uh, also with the composition. This feels like an experiment that uh, went wrong. This is, of course, Lalique Ancre Noir Sport. A lot of people love this fragrance because it's a fresher take on uh, the original Ancre Noir. To me, the best out of uh, the whole line is the original Ancre Noir. I don't really like uh, Ancre Noir Al Extreme because it's very resinous, it's very pungent and headache inducing to me. And I don't like this one because it feels like a uh, half-baked uh, cake, if you want, that uh, misfired in the oven. Mainly a very poor interpretation of what a truly uh, fresh scent should uh, smell and should perform also. So, I wouldn't recommend you going and um, buying this fragrance. To be honest with you, because Lalique is one of my favorite houses, it's a huge disappointment for me. Let's move on to the last two in this list. And the last two are niche fragrances from the same house, of course. But these are so hyped and uh, <laughs> it's um, quite curious to me why uh, people continue to hype these fragrances. The first one is Manchera Oud Cafe. This is, uh, if you want, a poor interpretation of a coffee fragrance. Because this one, on my skin, throughout the whole wearing, smells only like celery. In the beginning it was nice, it was interesting, I was very curious to feel that celery accord. It was something mesmerizing, if you want. But um, after I wore it too many times, I uh, became, uh, let's say, offended uh, by the fact that this one smells only like celery, like green, fresh celery, which is unacceptable, uh, to be honest. And also, the coffee note in this one is uh, mostly inexistent. This would be the only reasonable way to put uh, or to describe how this fragrance smells. Yet, it's very hyped in the community. Honestly, it's not worth your time or money. Avoid it. Go and purchase something else from the House of Manchera because they have a lot of great fragrances. And the last one on this list, again from the House of Manchera, but this is 
one of the most hyped fragrances in the past two years to be honest i haven't seen any fragrance being so hyped uh, on youtube especially but also on the internet in general like this one uh, it reminds me uh, <laughs> the about the hype that Mont Blanc Individuel got a couple of years ago also it reminds me about uh, this fragrance from uh, 24 Cent Story which was really really hyped about 10 years ago and this fragrance is called Oud Lemon Mint this is simply obnoxious on so many levels and it's so bad on so many levels that um, I cannot describe it anymore the simple fact that I'm seeing the bottle and I'm seeing the packaging induces me headaches. It's so synthetic, it's so overly sweet, it's such a huge mess in the composition that's impossible for me to acknowledge how uh, great this fragrance is for other people. Keep away from it, avoid it at any cost. I've seen a lot of YouTubers, a lot of reviewers saying that this is a great scent for summer, for hot summer days. Are you kidding me? Summer where? In Antarctica maybe? Summer on Pluto? On Titan? On, uh, I don't know, Juno? Or uh, what other uh, satellites exist on this uh, galaxy or solar system? But not on Earth. This is not a summer fragrance this is a cold very cold type of weather fragrance this is one of the biggest um, disappointments in terms of fragrances that i ever had to encounter this is my list with 10 uh, undesirable 10 uh, <laughs> unworthy uh, fragrances that i highly encourage you not to buy of course this is my personal opinion you can go ahead and try them, but please try them first, buy samples, test them out on your skin and only afterwards see if you want to go ahead and purchase a full bottle. Thank you for watching, see you in the next one. As always my friends, be safe, be good. Peace.